Hey everybody, Fishman here. It is time for me now to uh, put lids on the new uh, rack system. Uh, winter's coming, and I want to uh, manage the humidity in my fish room as much as possible. Uh, normally what I would do is uh, just uh, lid them all with glass. Uh, a lot of people don't have the tools uh, that you know require to work with glass. So I thought instead I would use this uh, polycarbonate sheet. Uh, I've seen a bunch of videos of people using it. It's really easy to work with. All you need to use is a pair of scissors or a utility knife. And it's very easy to score and break. And uh, The only disadvantage I thought initially was uh, because of the corrugations, uh, you, <laughs> you can't really cut it to a specific size. So instead what I thought I'd do is I would make, uh, well, two separate lids and then just have them overlap at one point. Did you see it? They always have, if you cut it properly, there's always a flap at one end. You'll see as we go along how, how that works out. It's, it makes it much simpler. And like I said, this is very easy to work with. Unfortunately, it has a great deal of flexibility in uh, one of the directions, so I wanted to get rid of that. This is the tank that it's going to go on. Uh, I had originally quarantined a bunch of goldfish in here, so goldfish being the way they are, uh, produced an awful lot of algae. And so I put these plecos in here to, to take care of it, and <laughs> I saw this when I was uh, going to do the work for this video. Uh, they decided to spawn, which is great because I can never ever have enough plecos, so that was kind of cool. So what I need to do here is I need to do a bit of a test fit on the, the tank, because like I said, I want to have a bit of a... Um, a moisture barrier to keep a lot of the splashing down keep uh, the humidity down in the house obviously so what I'm gonna do here is I want to know uh, the end pieces that I'm going to be gluing on which are going to become the brackets I want to know how far down I need to, to attach those so I put them in the tank here just to give a, a quick visual it's <laughs> easier for me to to see how these things work out after I just sort of put things in place and then it's a matter of uh, gluing on the brackets. Now, I did a test before uh, this a few days ago, just to make sure it was going to be uh, strong enough. Uh, so I just cut a little piece off and I glued it onto a piece of acrylic, and I think that bond should be more than fine. Because like I said, the durability of this is kind of important. Uh, glass lids last forever, as long as you don't drop them on the floor. And the reason for the brackets is, like I said, twofold. First off, I want to get rid of that flexibility there. And also that, uh, well, the corrugations, <laughs> they supply quite a gap uh, on one end, or both ends, I should say, that uh, will allow a lot of moisture and possibly fish jumps and that sort of stuff. Uh, so I want to I want to seal that up. Gluing this, <laughs> it, was a, it was a nuisance. Uh, it is very flexible. I found if I had an extra pair of hands, uh, or actually, you know, took the time to... Uh, build a clamp system for this it probably would have gone a lot easier uh, but I wanted to just do this quickly and like this is gonna be a test and then like I said when like it's uh, end of September now uh, probably by the end of October all the windows in the house are gonna be closed so I want to make sure that this is all uh, you know finished and ready to go by then so I wanted to get this done so it doesn't actually if you haven't uh, if you've glued enough things it's not that bad but like I said it's uh, one of those things that if you want to keep it nice and square so it sits on the tank properly it, it is a bit of a pain but I got it done and all I'm gonna do now is this is gonna like this whole thing right here will sit inside the aquarium so what I need to do now is just uh, put a little um, height bracket on it so that uh, it will sit still but as you can see, it gets rid of the uh, flexibility in the other direction quite nicely. So now all I need to do is... Oh, sorry. Glue on the other end, of course. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself here. You also notice, like, you can see it just now, uh, that flap at the bottom there. Uh, there's no bracket for that. And <laughs> the reason for that is going to be coming up shortly. So it turned out, rather <laughs> coincidentally, that... The height for the bracket is perfect for a three-quarter inch piece of uh, off-cut plywood to, to help out here. And it's just a matter now of just gluing that on. But even though you, you can see right there where my finger was touching, it's still quite flexible. 
but I think it's uh, rigid enough now that it's going to actually function quite well as a lid. So just a matter of gluing that on, it's very easy. And acrylic to acrylic is such a fast weld. I mean, this is in real time. And right now, I mean, I, I glued it, what, 10 seconds ago? And it will already support all the weight and everything. It's fine. If you're going to put any great amount of weight on, of course, you need to uh, let it cure overnight. So this is the first one done. I just need to pull the sponge out because uh, <laughs> the sponge is uh, uh, cut for a height with uh, no uh, lids. It's just easy to trim, obviously. There you go. Fits in really nice and easily. And this is the reason why I'm doing it in two pieces. Uh, mostly because uh, when you feed, you don't want to, you know, have to lift up the whole lid. But also, this is the uh, outside uh, hang-on-back filter I made. And as you can tell by the amount of dirt in it, uh, it's actually doing really quite well. Oh. <laughs> it's also really dirty because you know, it was a goldfish tank. Uh, but I need to be able to cut around one. So this is the second one. Uh, they're roughly about the same size. And what I'm going to do now is <laughs> very easily... I mean, <laughs> this is probably the, the best selling factor, I think, for using polycarbonate sheets like this. It is extremely easy to work with. You don't need any kind of tools. I mean, this is just a good quality pair of scissors. And it's just a simple matter of uh, snipping it off. Uh, I did it in two steps. I, uh, this direction is really quite easy to cut with the scissors, but instead of trying to fiddle around and get the scissors to go around the corner, uh, what I did for the other direction is I just flipped it over and then just scored it with uh, the, uh, the utility knife. And then also I need to cut out a little extra bit uh, for where the intake is for uh, the, the filter. And that's what this little notch here is for. <laughs> you can tell here. I finally figured out you only have to score it once now to break this stuff. So there you go. And that's uh, all there is to that. That's, uh, like I said, it wasn't a hard build at all. It took me maybe 20 minutes for the whole thing, one end to the other. And here's the lid on, in place. It's uh, nice and light. I mean, and you don't have to worry about glass on glass. Uh, with the other lids I had to, oh, sorry, <laughs> that, see the overlap there? That was the reason why I didn't have to be too concerned about, uh, like what I'm original concern about uh, cutting it to size. Just let it overlap on the flap side there, and it's very, very easy to do. There you go, it's all done. And uh, I'm going to have a bit of a harder difficulty, I think, with uh, this tank, because it has the planter in it. <laughs> if you remember, uh, not too long ago I did an undergravel filter, an upgrade to it, and that undergrowth filter fed into a planter. Uh, a few weeks later, this is the planter. Uh, lots of pothos in it. Uh, here's what it looked like originally. And you'll notice that the, at the far right of uh, this planter, uh, there's a spider plant in there, and it's in a pot. That pot, uh, the reason for that is spider plant will root originally in water fine, but once uh, uh, after it gets a little, uh, like a little older and it has its roots, it does tend to drown. So I thought the uh, best thing to do would be to try it, it out in a pot and let the water wick up through a bit of gravel and into the soil. And that's working perfectly fine. As you can tell, it's growing quite well. And that plant over on the uh, far left is a rabbit's foot fern I had rescued from a client who was retiring. And I said, this thing's just uh, going gangbusters. I mean, it's uh, everything's growing really well in it, and I uh, couldn't be more pleased. Like I said, this is just being fed by the up uh, pipe from the uh, from the underground filter. It's really quite cool. And now for a special <laughs> unboxing. Uh, I uh, am subscribed to a channel. Uh, it's uh, this is D's channel. Uh, Down the wormhole, you may know it better as. Uh, it's a great channel, uh, and I have won their uh, 1,000 subs giveaway. I mean, <laughs> I couldn't be more pleased. It's a great channel. If you don't know uh, or have watched or whatever, I definitely urge you to go over and check it all out. It's a wonderful t-shirt, D. Thank you very much. And I will leave uh, links and descriptions and all that sort of stuff uh, below for you guys to go and have a look. And as always, thank you very much for watching. If you like this uh, style of video, please uh, like and or subscribe. And also uh, go over and check out Dee's channel. And she also included this, uh, <laughs> a little name tag for, uh, for well, my channel, for Fishman. So again, thank you very much for your gifts, Dee, and thank you everybody for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Uh, bye for now.